Welcome my dear friends. Have you ever wondered what is the difference between NFP and SDN and how they work? Telecom industry is going through a revolution where cloud native networks are going to become necessity. If you want to be technically competent, grow and rise in telecom, you should learn and upgrade yourself to these cloud technologies such as NFE, such as SDN, such as containers and hypervisors. Yes, I'm here to clarify all of this in a super simplified way using easy to understand graphics and to make it memorable and fun. Well, if you see the SDN and NFE, both architect use the network abstraction, but they are doing it differently. While NFE covers the softwareization, the virtualization and makes the building block ready, the SDN does a totally different thing. The SDN forwards the data packet from the one network device to the another one. At the same time, SDN's networking control function for routing and policy definitions are building the highways and the pipelines where our traffic can reach to its destination. The NFE movement started with the push coming from the mobile service providers. In 2012, these Taiwan operators felt that they can greatly simplify their operations and they can reduce the cost if all the network functions are virtualized as software appliances. NFE is all about three main components which we are going to cover and discuss in detail. The first concept is the softwareization, the second concept is the virtualization and the last one is the orchestration or automation. Well, this is a classic network of 4G which is deployed across all the mobile operators across the globe. We will see how this typical 4G network, which is a typical traditional network, the way it has been deployed, how we are going to virtualize this. You can see that all these nodes, they are deployed on traditional hardware. We also call this as a purpose-built hardware. This is specialized appliance or hardware which is meant to perform a very very specific function. For example, we can see these individual hardware racks serving the individual functions such as the routers, the P-gateways, the HLRs, the MMEs, the OCS, the PCRF, the DNS and so on so far. This is one node, one function one typical set of and the type of hardwares. The problem with this type of deployment is the lack of scalability. There is also a problem with lack of speed and the lack of flexibility. And there are so many issues which we are going to discuss moving ahead and we have also seen them in the last video. Usually this hampers the business as there is always a delay in the new product launch and there is always issues with the meeting the customer requirements. Now let's understand what is NFE and how NFE solve these issues. NFE stands for Network Function Virtualization. And as we have discussed, they are going to do three things. The first one is the softwareization, the second one is the virtualization, and the last one is the orchestration and automation. NFE replaces the costly dedicated and purpose-built hardware with the generic servers that use software to provide a bunch of different virtualized network functions. Uh, we call it as VNFs as well. Virtualization is all about software package that perform a specific function. We call this as a VNF, that is virtual network function. This VNF is equivalent to the physical network and is capable to perform any network task such as it can work as a router or virtual router, it can work as a switch or virtual switch, it can work as a virtual HLR, it can, it can work as a virtual MSC, it can work as a virtual SMSC and so on and so forth. It can potentially take any network function and decouple the network services from the hardware that deliver them. Decoupling means the services and the hardware, they are separated from each other. It also separate out the network function from the capacity. This effectively means you can deploy a very small, relatively small, a large, a very large, huge capacity of any instance. You only need to increase the license, compute and storage in order to increase or decrease the capacity. And then you can take the capacity and increase. You can do the scale up or you can do the scale down. 
It's all flexible. NFE uses the virtual machines as the key building blocks where applications can be hosted. These virtual machines are having flexible capacity and can host any application. NFE turns the traditional network hardware into the virtualized network function. And these virtual network functions, they are running on a generic hardware such as the HV and the Dells. We also call this generic hardware as Quotes. Quotes stands for Commercial of the Shelf Hardware. NFE also enables the service chaining which helps multiple functions to be used in chronology. We'll understand all these concepts moving ahead in the NFE architecture. In October 2012, seven Taiwan operators grouped together and they started working on their problems. You can see the name of these operators on the right hand side. These operators, they have came up with a concept of network function virtualization to solve most of their day to day issues and challenges. These seven operators, they published a white paper and a conference in Germany and they post this uh, white paper to the standards body. Now standards body like the ITUT and the HC, which is European Telecommunication Standard Institute, they started working on this white paper. Now there is a community formed by the name of ISG NFE, which have evolved the technology through the several phases. Now these are the guys who have released the publications and who have done the standardization, who came up with the release two and then release three and they have done numerous POCs in this subject and ultimately they evolved the standards. This large community today consists of 300 plus companies including 38 of world major service provider. In end of video, I'm also going to share you the link where you can see all these white papers and the specs which have been developed by the ITSI. Now on the left hand side, you can see the framework which have been delivered, deployed and standardized by the ITSI team. Now what is the need of this framework? This particular group which have been formed by ITSI, this group have came up with the architecture, framework and specification for NFE. There are three main components to the entire architecture. The first one is the NFVI, the second one is the VNF and the third one is the MANO. This architecture ensures a tight coupling between the hardware and the software, which are again highly, which are again going to be highly, highly customized moving ahead. I mean to say you can put software from one partner, you can put hardware from another partner. You need to have interop and interworking between them. This particular NFE architecture framework is developed to ensure that while maintaining the high level of customization and flexibility, there is a standardization and there is always a compatibility prevails between various deployments, between various vendors, between various solutions. It should not happen. The solution which is deployed out there in Asia is different from the solution which is going to be deployed in the US. The solution which have been prepared by the Huawei should not differ from the solution which have been prepared by the Nokia. I mean to say they all have to follow some standards wherein the interop is always there and we maintain the standards out there. That is the need of the framework which have been deployed, which have been developed by the ITC team. Now let's understand what are the building blocks of NFE. Network function virtualization infrastructure. We call it as NFVI as well. This is the layer who is responsible to handle hardware. This hosts all storage, compute, network hardware, and this is going to abstract the same as virtual resources for consumption of the virtual machines. We deployed generic code space hardware or servers or blades in the NFVI layer. In order to leverage massive scale required by the telecom network providers, we can deploy these hardware blades in server or like we can deploy them in a bulk. We can deploy them in multiple locations. Virtualized network function VNF is the second layer where we are going to host the actual application. These application are the virtual network functions which are running as software. A single VNF can be deployed over multiple virtual machines. Ultimately, you are going to host multiple applications over there. I mean to say you can put MSC in first VNF, SMSC in second VNF and so on and so forth. On right hand side in orange color, you can see the menu layer. 
We also call it as NFE menu layer, which is network function virtualization management and orchestration architectural framework for managing and controlling the entire piece. The manager is sitting on the right. This menu is controlling the entire cloud. Now let's move ahead where we are going to get into the depth and we are going to understand how this cloud infrastructure works out there. So we are going to cover the concept of VNF in more detail on this slide. This shows the actual telecom applications such as the VSMSC, uh, I mean to say the virtual SMSC, the virtual MSC, the virtual HLR, the virtual SGSN, the virtual GGSN, they're all deployed in the software module in the VNF. You can see it out there. VNF is hosting these telecom nodes as virtual applications. We can allocate resources to these virtual nodes on the basis of requirements such as VHLR or virtual HLR needs much more storage while virtual MSC requires much more compute. All of these individual virtual network nodes can have reserved compute, reserved storage and reserved networks. Network means the NIC, the portion of the NIC card which is going to give you the, the IO operations to the, to the net, to the, to the LAN WAN connectivity. I mean to say you can allocate a limited set of the CPUs, a limited set of storage to a particular application. For example, you, you can allocate five virtual CPUs to and say eight TB of the storage and say two NIC to a virtual SMSC. You can give a different type of resources to the MSC. It depends upon the application which type of resources are required. Now the beauty of this particular cloud infrastructure is the SMSC or virtual SMSC is not going to eat up the resources which have been allocated to the virtual MSC or virtual HLR. They are not going to eat each other resources. They are separated. They are logically separated. This allocation of resources is done by the virtualization layer which is sitting in NFVI. Now let's understand the NFVI architecture in detail. We'll start with the bottom layer which consists of NFVI and WIM. You can see it on the bottom. NFVI stands for the Network Function Virtualization Infrastructure. The role of this layer is to host the hardware and manage the physical part. We can deploy blades of generic HP and Dell hardware which are visible in the bottom. The NFE infrastructure NFEI is a combination of a physical networking which is the NIC card for IO, the computing, the storage resources exposed as a common networking or NFE infrastructure. These resources can be at one place or they can be geographically distributed across multiple locations. This layer also contains a critical component by the name of hypervisor which is responsible for abstracting the physical resources into the virtual resources. The virtualization layer sits right above the hardware and abstract the resources so that they can be logically partitioned and provided to the VNF performing their specific network functions. NetNet NFEI abstracts the actual hardware or generic Dell HP blades into the virtual resource by the name of the virtual compute, the virtual memory and the virtual network. On right hand side, you can see there is another component which is VIM. We also call it as Virtualized Infrastructure Manager. The role of WIM is to manage and control the NFVI. WIM also manages the FCAPs, reporting and the events of these NFVI. NFVI means the virtual part of the resources as well as the physical part of the resources. I mean to say you have to insert a blade, you have to make one particular HP or Dell blade active in the network. All of that management of this entire hardware is done by the WIM. Alright, let's jump to the second layer. <clears throat> now, this is the layer where we are going to discuss the VNF and VNF manager. This is going to be the critical key component for the virtualization. Before we start with the VNF, let's understand what is this network function. Now, network function actually refers to the telecom nodes such as the MSC, such as the HLR, which provides the functionality such as like handling the voice, handling the data, storing the customer so on so forth. Traditionally, these network functions or nodes, they are always deployed as a physical appliances. They are running on proprietary hardware and they are tightly coupled with the underlying software. 
A VNF, on another hand, is a network function using the software that is decoupled from the underlying hardware. These virtualized network function run inside the virtual machines. We call it as VMs as well. You can see it on the screen. We can have virtual SMSC running on two VMs, virtual MSC running on one VM and virtual HLR running on three VMs. Based on the requirement, we can increase or decrease the number of VMs or we can increase or decrease the number of resources which are required by the VNF or the application. A VNF manager on the right hand side, it is responsible for the things related to the FCAPs, the operations and the management of the VNF such as the setting, the monitoring, the configuration, the performance, the logging and all kind of fault, all kind of alerting, all kind of performance, anything, everything related to the operation and maintenance of these particular VNFs. The VNF manager also manages the life cycle of VNF which also includes the creation, the deletion, maintaining, migration, all of that. The FCAPs and ONM of applications such as the virtual MSC and virtual SMSC or virtual HLR is done by the EM. Now this is specifically the operations of the application. I mean to say uh, the, the, the ONM of application means for an example if MSC link is going down if MSC KPAs are degrading, if HLR link with STP is going down or if HLR is having some problem as an application. Now the KPI, the links, the interfaces, the node alerts, these particular things, the operation is done by the element management. Now you can see there are three layers of the FCAPs or operation and maintenance which are out there which have been discussed. The first layer is the FCAPs or operations of NFVI and VM or hardware. This is done by the VIM. We, call, we also call it as Virtualized Infrastructure Manager. The second one is the FCAPs or operation of the VNF. I mean to say the creation of VNF, deletion of VNF, the performance of VNF and all that. That is done by the VNF Manager. The topmost one the FCAPs or operation of the telecom virtualized application like the virtual MSC, the virtual HLR, wherein like we can see the links, interfaces, the KPIs and rest of that. The FCAPs and operation of these nodes, this is being done by the EM. Now let's cover the last building block or architectural block for the NFE, which is the orchestrator. This orchestration is the topmost uh, node which you can see in the yellow color. This is the key to any type of automation expected out of the SDN and the NFE. This is a part of NFE framework and it is also known by the name of NFE menu. It's basically a component of the NFE menu. This is also called as the NFVO or NFE orchestrator. This helps to standardize the function of virtual networking to increase the interoperability of software defined network, the SDN. The NFVO performs the resource orchestration and network service orchestration. It is a central component of NFE based solution. It binds together the different functions to create end to end resource coordinated service in a dispersed NFE environment. I mean to say you have to create a new GGSN and you need to create the entire flow. The orchestrator is going to do it. The orchestrator is going to manage the the global view of the resources, it is going to manage the global flows, it is going to keep tap on the hardware resources, it is also going to coordinate for allocating and scaling up the resources or scaling down the resources, it, it is also going to help the specific VNF or keep track of the individual VNF instances, it also helps in end-to-end -end network service creation in a very very automated way. NFE also does the resource orchestration which is ensuring that there are always adequate resources available to for compute the storage and there are always network resources available to provide network services which is required by the users. The NFEO for all this type of the automation and all these resource management and the flow management, how does it work? It is going to coordinate with the VIM or directly with the NFVI resources or with the VNF managers. For the, for the required automation, for required creation, 
of the of of the resources required allocation of the resources it has it has the ability to coordinate authorize release and engage the the resources which are required by the particular flow net net it is doing the global governance of the flows and the resources and it is going to do it in a very very automated way typically there is always a single orchestrator that oversee the entire nfe sdn service now this is the link you can use it for going through the hc specification so whatever architecture which we have discussed the nfe framework you can go through the hc specification wherein like you can get the more nitty gritty of the entire specs so you can follow this particular link which is shown on the screen well we have understood the high level nfe and like how nfe works but the problem is still not resolved we have seen nfe helps in virtualizing the network which help us in the rapid deployment and ultimately reduce the new service new node creation times to few seconds for an example we can create the virtual msc or virtual mme or virtual smsc we can do it in all few seconds and we can make it much more automated with help of the orchestrator but there is a problem the problem is the network connectivity we can create the virtual resources but if we are not going to provide the connectivity it is not going to work the connectivity or network reachability requires multiple things that requires the ip allocation the bandwidth allocation the policy opening the routing changes it requires end to end reachability it requires a lot of service testing and the entire thing is manual you can see all these things on the right hand side now if you are taking few days to accomplish and complete these things then there is no fun of doing the nfe piece which is ready with you in few seconds i mean to say you cannot deliver the end to end new service or new node in few minutes or few seconds because while nfe is ready immediately in few seconds but the network reachability is going to take few days now sdn is going to help us out there now in next video i am going to take you through the sdn piece and we are going to understand how sdn works on the ground and how sdn is helping us on this particular network reachability piece well that's me we have already covered the nfe or virtualized network for teleco operators in next video we are going to cover the sdn stay tuned to that if you want to download this ppt or video please visit my website uh, telecomtutorial.info hope this video presentation is useful for you please feel free to like dislike comment and share please subscribe to my youtube channel for more technical videos thank you